I know we all want to celebrate New Year's, but when you're alone, there's a real danger of going over the line between harmless indiscretion and serious jail time. <laughs> and that line is usually connected to the amount and frequency of your alcohol intake. Because, see, when you're alone, you don't have an alcohol consumption consultant nearby. Like, say, a policeman or a member of the clergy or the ultimate authority, your own wife. Now, here's something you can do to stop yourself from drinking too much. Open up your clock radio, break into the snooze control circuit. It's not hard to find. Just keep touching wires and pushing the snooze button. You'll find the right ones in no time. Now, the way a snooze alarm works normally is you press the button, it shuts the radio off for an hour. But for our purposes, I'm going to splice into the dispensing circuit on this pop machine. OK, uh, you might want to unplug her first, but I don't have that kind of time. OK, now what happens is you take all the pop out of there, replace it with cans of your favorite fermented beverage. All right, now it's New Year's. You feel like a brewski? You press the button, which also activates the snooze control. And now you can't have another beer for an hour. <laughs> Happy New Year. To our New Year's special. We've never done a New Year's special before. I'm sure that'll become painfully obvious in the not too distant future. <laughs> don't listen to him. I don't. <laughs> we have a great show for you. It's just our way of having you bring in the new year. Yeah, no, that's right. And, and you know, if anybody's out there who's maybe over 40 or you got a couple of kids and you want to kind of celebrate, you know, New Year's early and be in bed sawing them by the time midnight comes around, <laughs> boy, I, I envy you. <laughs> There's that wet blanket what? thing again. Listen, no. you just do whatever works for you, okay? Yeah. We just want to make sure that you look forward to a happy new year. Yeah, no, that's, that's all I'm saying, because they may have had a crappy old year. That's all. That's, uh, that's the only... No, no, no. This is, this is New Year's. It's a yeah. time of expectation and yeah. optimism, you know? Yeah, right. Can we see a little enthusiasm and huh? excitement, please? Oh, no, no I, you know, Carol, I don't like excitement, you know? Excitement ends up in the hospital. <laughs> Sometimes the maternity ward. But I think, you know, if we work together, I think we'll get through this just fine. We're not going to get through it. What? We're going to celebrate yeah, it. Right, it's right, millions. Right. We're going to celebrate right, it. Right, I want right, to see right. some enthusiasm right now. OK, all right. Uh, OK, um, all right, let's, let's, uh, let's whoop it up. Let's whoop it up and uh, let's, hey, let's party. Let's party. There we go. Let's party. <laughs> That's it. That was it. Let's party. Whoop it up. Whoop it up. Whoop. Oh, they're going nuts, huh? Whoop it up. <laughs> we gotta go. Come on, you guys. Let's go. Come on. It's, it's time to party, my peeps. <laughs> Here Where did we go wrong with you, Harold? <laughs> well, it was all those years of not getting the respect I deserved. You got what you deserved. It just wasn't respect. That's it. <laughs> Some large word game. Today's winner receives a free tuxedo rental from Featherstone's Funeral Home. <laughs> tuxedo not available on Saturdays. Okay, Dalton, cover your ears. Harold, you have 30 seconds to get Dalton Humphrey to say this word. Kiss. Yes. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. And go. Okay, all right, Mr. Dome. Um, this is something that you and your wife share on New Year's. Cab fare. <laughs> no, no. Um, okay, it, uh, it's New Year's Eve and you're dancing and it's midnight and all you want is a... Uh... Back pill. <laughs> okay, all right, you know what? Let's forget New Year's. Forget New Year's. Let's go. Okay, all right. This morning when you left the house, um, you gave your wife... Oh, 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 oh. time to cool off. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Further back. Let's go further back. A little further back. Um, uh, oh, okay, okay. After you said your wedding vows, the minister told you to... Reconsider. <laughs> Wait, what? Huh? Kind of 
so bizarre that he would say that. Harold, you're running out of oh, time. Oh, okay, yeah, Will. All right, okay. All right, um, all right Mr. Dalton, uh, let's, let's see. The last time you had a romantic evening with your wife, uh, what did you do? Oh, I went to that uh, new restaurant, Port Asbestos. Oh. There's 20 bucks I can kiss goodbye. Oh! <laughs> Red asked me to jot down a few of my New Year's resolutions and share them with you. I'm going to have to do some of these from memory. I wrote down a couple and then I dropped the pen. <laughs> <clears throat> on the personal side, <clears throat> I'm going to focus more of my free time on art and literature. So I'm getting a satellite dish and some of those books on tape. <laughs> I'm also planning to discontinue the service side of the marina. Uh, dealing with people whose boats aren't working is just not an enjoyable way to make a living. <laughs> a lot of them expect the boats to be fixed promptly and properly. They don't seem to realize it's my summer, too. <laughs> so, starting this year, we're going to specialize in sales only. You want to buy a boat from me? It's cash up front and no test drives. <laughs> We also don't honor any more factory warranties. They should build them better in the first place. <laughs> and finally, I'm going to try and cut down on my work hours. Last year, I tried that 40-hour thing, but that worked out to over three hours a month. <laughs> oh, it's nap time. <laughs> Had a bit of a car accident this morning. You know, I used to be able to drive standard transmission, no problem. But now with the trick me, <laughs> this is one of those spinning playground rides. Luckily, there were no kids around. They'd already been on it for five minutes, so they were over in the bushes barfing. <laughs> they, uh, good thing Dalton wasn't with me. This is his car. She's jammed on there pretty good. She spins around in a circle. But I'm thinking, hey, wait a minute. This is New Year's Eve, and this rotating car could be converted into a dandy noisemaker. I got everything I need right here. Anybody with half a brain could do this. We do have music at midnight, so I hook the speaker up to the 8-track, and right at the stroke of 12, we're going to be listening to Old Lang Syne, played by Guy Linguini and his royal custodians. <laughs> but mainly what we need is noise. So I've attached a tambourine to my drive wheel. <laughs> Meanwhile, I got maracas playing wipeout on the windshield. And as a special treat, I wedged a trombone into the tailpipe. Not often you see a car with a horn in the back. I guess it's a guy thing. <laughs> Okay, that's a good start. But when it comes to being annoyed, we've only begun to scratch the surface. <laughs> Snow Fence is the perfect addition to a New Year's party because it's just like the guests. It stands around looking goofy, and then when you need it, it falls over. <laughs> Hopefully it'll be as noisy as the guests, too. Especially once these hockey sticks start raking across it. I think it's time for a test run. I got her in gear, and I hooked up this remote starter, so I don't even have to be in the car when it starts spinning. I pretty well thought of everything. Hmm. <laughs> All right, no, I'm fine. It's an embarrassing place to have a bruise, but after 35 years of marriage, sadly, no one's going to notice. <laughs> All right, let's pretend it's midnight. Let's do the countdown together. Three, two, one. Happy New Year!
New Year's, we have a special presentation by local animal control officer, Ed Fred. Ed, tell everybody what we're up to here, will you? Well, I was asked to make a presentation involving animals, yep. one that would kick off the New Year to a good start, and uh, I think I've done that. <laughs> Don't seem very enthused, Ed. Well, Red, normally this is my vacation time, a time to be away from animals, a time to reflect and review the results of my various medical tests. <laughs> how, how do those medical tests go? Well, the flea and tick thing turned out to be nothing, but, uh, <laughs> and the hoof and mouth came back negative. <laughs> Rabies is the big one. <laughs> We're all hoping for the best. <laughs> to me, that's all the more reason to have a big celebration now, so tell us about it. Okay. Well, I thought it would be a good omen to release a flock of doves to start off the new year. You see, the dove has been a symbol of peace since the days of Noah's Ark, when it returned to the ship with an olive branch in its claws. Yeah, actually, you know, you owe, you owe a lot to Noah because his ark saved all the animals from being extinct. I hate Noah. Okay, all right. Okay, all right. Uh, you know what? I, let's, 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 not, let's not dwell on the negative here, Ed. Let's, just, let's get on with our presentation, eh? Is there anything I can do to, to help release the doves? I would recommend you stand well back yeah. and cover your eyes with something. Okay. Preferably something harder than a dove's beak. <laughs> and once they get up in the air, you know, they get easily excited, so I wouldn't stand under them, okay? okay. Well, I, we're all ready, so let's release the doves. Yeah, we don't go when you're ready, we go when I'm ready. Yeah. yeah okay. Sorry, Ed. Yeah, sorry. Thought we had an understanding hey, no, here, Red. Hey, no, okay. I'm okay. Fine. I'm good. You go when you're ready. All right. All right. Let these doves mark the beginning of a peaceful and prosperous new year. These resolutions? Yeah, I got a few. I've always got a few. See, my mentor and personal guru, Anthony Anthony, he's adamant about the importance of self-improvement. And he's made a lot of money making guys like me a better person. Okay, uh, this year I want to try and not be so judgmental. Yeah. You know, sometimes people are disrespectful of me, and I think it's because they, they see the septic-sucking business I have and the dry sewage and crusted on the hoses, and naturally, they're jealous. See, not everyone can be an entrepreneur. Not everyone can be a success. Not everyone can success. And I have to accept that. I have to be sensitive to their pain in their boring office jobs with no future and not even a whiff of the kind of life I have. So no matter what they call me, I will not retaliate. I'm gonna rise above it. And that's important, you know, because in the sewage business, you have to be able to rise above it. Happy New Year. We now come to that portion of the show where we address those three little words that men find so hard to say. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, today's letter reads as follows. Dear experts, all my life I've sung all dang sign every New Year's. It makes me very emotional. Often I weep. My question is, what the heck is the song about? <laughs> Well, I have no idea, but it's Scottish, so it's probably sad. It's the bagpipes. Yeah. Whenever I hear bagpipes, it brings me to tears. Yeah, me too. I smile when they stop, though. You know, it's obvious that you two know nothing about Scotland. For example, did you know that in Scotland, New Year's is more popular than Christmas? Oh. Is that because they don't have to buy presents? <laughs> No, no, no. It's because New Year's in Scotland predates Christianity. In fact, it's not even called New Year's. It's called Hog Manet. It means the moon of the hag. Well, I don't think the moon from a hag would be something I'd ever want to see. No, no, no. It refers to a date, Mike. It's kind of a superstitious thing. It's, uh, it's bad luck to make a marriage proposal or to break glass or to spin flax or to carry out the rubbish. I feel that way every day. <laughs> you know, right at the stroke of midnight, yeah. they fling open the windows and doors to let out the old year and drive out the bad dogs of the underworld. <laughs> also, they tell the neighbors to go home. <laughs> no, no, and, and then much later, their bands of roving men called wassails go from house to house, carrying a big bowl of alcohol and asking for money. 
Wassails, I've heard of that. Oh, well, sure you have. Yo, Mike, Wassails! Wassails! Come on! Stop that! I'm trying to educate you people here. Now, come on. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Are you guys gonna be serious or are you gonna be goofballs? It's New Year's Eve, I'm going with goofballs. Oh, hi, everybody. Ranger Gord here with my New Year's resolutions. Do you realize what an advantage it is to be a forest ranger when it comes to making New Year's resolutions? I mean, you people, when you make resolutions, you've got friends and family and co-workers around you every day. If you happen to break one of yours, everybody knows, right? <laughs> you poor, pathetic people. <laughs> now, look at the deal I've got. I can make any resolution I want, and I can break it. Just like that. You know why? because nobody ever comes up here, that's why. <laughs> I mean, uh, I could decide, okay, this year I'm not going to bathe. Who would know? <laughs> just me. And that's just the way I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I like being alone. <laughs> I can do whatever I want. <laughs> I could spend the whole day licking things. <laughs> Friends don't let you do that, believe me. I could stay up late, watching TV, watching whatever I want. <laughs> Didn't know I had a TV, did you? Well, I do. And it'll work a lot better when I get electricity. <laughs> anyway, I'm not going to make any resolutions because I don't need any. I like things just the way they are. <laughs> no nosy neighbors, no nosy bosses, nobody at all. <laughs> just me. <laughs> I'm so lucky. <laughs> You know, bringing in the new year with a celebratory drink is an old custom. Goes way back to ancient times. I believe it was Julius Caesar who said, Friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your beers. <laughs> but now, on New Year's Eve, you're actually supposed to be drinking champagne. But that can be a problem. What with French wine being so expensive and you being so cheap. So here's what you do. You make your own. Now start with a good-sized jug. Quantity is an important factor. I find with alcohol, people even like the bad stuff if there's plenty of it. So we're gonna make a magnum. Here again, magnum is a Latin word meaning humongous. Okay, you know, champagne has a bit of a zing to it. Even the smell tickles your nose. Well, you can get the same effect with vinegar. Ah, what the heck, it's New Year's. <laughs> okay, now you fill up the rest of your magnum with your favorite beer or whatever kind Dalton brought. He'll never notice. He'll be too busy chasing the shrimp ring. Okay, now we come to the fun part of champagne. And I don't mean that tipsy feeling you get when you start doing your Jimmy Stewart impression all night. No, no, I'm talking about the bubbles. Now, in real champagne, the bubbles come from, I don't know, grapes with air in them or something. And we're gonna make our bubbles by adding baking soda to the vinegar we already got in there. But here's the thing. We don't want those chemicals mixing too soon. So get yourself some of these cold capsules and empty them into a glass. All right, and save all that for later, because someday you may have a cold and just drink the whole thing all at once. Won't do anything for your cold, but it'll give you something the doctors can cure. Okay, now you want to fill these capsules up with the baking soda. Yeah, all right, well, I'm, actually, I've already done a few. So we'll just pop them into the Magnum. Okay, now we just gotta get the cork in there before those chemicals mix. All right, now get yourself some chicken wire. It's not just for decoration anymore. You wanna use that to hold the cork in place. And then for that little extra touch of class, get yourself some gold foil. <laughs> okay, by midnight, the capsules will be all dissolved in there. And that will allow the carbon dioxide to come firing off into the beer as the baking soda mixes in with the vinegar. So now all you gotta do is remove your fancy foil, take off your protective chicken wire off there, and if you put in enough vinegar, you shouldn't even need a corkscrew. So Happy New Year, or I should say, Happy New Beer.
Responsibly. <laughs> oh, hi, everybody. Ranger Gord here. Well, it's the big night, isn't it? New Year's Eve. Woohoo! <laughs> you know, forest rangers don't have big nights, we have long nights. <laughs> Long, cold, lonely nights when you wake up in a cold sweat with your lips wrapped around a can of cream corn. <laughs> you know, I think the Captain and Tennille say it best in their brand new hit, Muskrat Love. <laughs> Bet you a forest ranger wrote Muskrat Love. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> it's a night of celebration, and for that, I've created this brand new animated film for your amazement. It's all about New Year's Eve in the forest, but I've called it Forest New Year's. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> Here we go. to teach everyone in the universe the tradition of a forest New Year's. And I can hardly contain my excitement. Well, you have a pretty small container. <laughs> well, I'm anxious to learn any bit of lore concerning the forest and its many traditions. <laughs> Good boy, Harold. Forest New Year's states that in order to guarantee a happy New Year, you have to hurl a lucky rock over the moon and across the river before the stroke of midnight. Oh, I've never heard of such a thing. I'm familiar with hurling before midnight. <laughs> you two grab that lucky rock and bring it down to the river. It's the one on the left. <laughs> oh, my mistake. It's the uh, one on the right. <laughs> To toss the rock, we're going to use nature's own catapult, the pine tree. That's a maple tree, Gord. Oh, oh well, it uh, it doesn't actually make any difference. Oh. Oh, there's a pine tree. There, Paul. Right there. Ah! Let me give you a hand there, Harold. Okay, stick the lucky rock on there, Red. You know, I think the luck may have worn off this particular rock. I'll give you a hand. We did it! It's going to be a happy new year. Well, it looks like Harold's gonna miss the first few weeks of it, so I think you might be right. <laughs> Happy New Year. May your septics never cause you a tear. May they handle your chili beans, bratwurst, and beer. May your tank run on empty throughout the new year. But if not, my pump and my hose are right here. I guess the time has come for me to make my New Year's resolution. And I've decided to be a lot more specific this year. Usually, I promise myself something like, I'm going to lose weight or start my own business or have a conversation with my parents. But this year, I've decided to zero right in on the problem. I solemnly swear, before all of these witnesses, that for the next year and possibly longer, I will not eat peanut butter sandwiches. <laughs> Period. Regardless of the circumstances, 
even in the case of an emergency. <laughs> this is because peanut butter has a way of sticking to the roof of a person's mouth. <laughs> that can be distracting and can also impede their ability to call for help <laughs> when they so desperately need it. <laughs> now, this may sound like an odd New Year's resolution to you, but you're not an animal control officer, are you? <laughs> no, you could probably spend most of your day sitting at your desk, drinking coffee, or doing whatever was necessary to get the peanut butter off of the roof of your mouth. <laughs> well, what be frickin' do? <laughs> I don't have that luxury. I don't work in an office. I work in the woods. I work in the woods with elk. Elk have horns. I level horns. <laughs> and so that is why I promise to never eat another peanut butter sandwich again, ever. Happy New Year. For New Year's, we thought we'd do our version of the Times Square dropping the ball at midnight, and Mike was making some kind of punch there. He's very socking the booze into her. But I got Winston filling the oil drum with water. That was going to be the counterweight. Well, no, easy, easy, there, easy. Holy cow. Oh, my golly. So, Mike, nobody was nobody's going to try that with a hospital insurance. Oh, so anyway, I'm getting, the, I'm getting the ball up there. We, we just hoist her up, and what I do is... Uh, Tie that onto the oil drum full of water. And the, the way it works is, as I was trying to explain to the guys, see, what we do is you let the water slowly out of the oil drum, and then the, the mirror ball will come down. So it's a very simple principle. Do you guys, you guys under, you, you know what I'm talking? Nothing, not a thing, nothing. Okay, so I said, all I got is I, un I un unplug, take that cork out, and the water goes out, and then, you get it now, you get nothing, nothing. There's not a, not a pulse there. So I thought, well, I'll just demonstrate. So as the water goes out, see that goes up, and the ball starts coming down. Of course, we're going to do this at midnight, but actually, it was good we did a trial run. Because we had a problem, she jammed into the pulley, and now I can't get it down, I can't get it up, and I don't know what to do. And now we got to get it out of the pulley there somehow. And then, so Walter had the idea that he could get maybe get a ladder or something, but I, you know, there's nothing really to put a ladder against. You can't balance a ladder on a pole. So no, get rid, get rid of the ladder, Walter. Forget the ladder, forget the ladder. And the other guys, meanwhile, have gone, gotten the helium balloon. Now Walter's only about 130 pounds, and uh, with about uh, 15, you, can, you know, you can actually get. Well, anyway, we. That's a good salute. You know, in retrospect, he probably should have hung on to the pole. That would have, that would have kept him. Because as he got up there, there was a bit of a crosswind, and he's uh, kind of getting away. So then, okay, all right. No, here's what we, no, here's what we do. Here's what we do. If we can, if we can get him to grab the end of the ladder, we can pull him over. We can pull him over to the pole. So we hold the ladder. Oh, just grab the end there. Grab the end, Walter. And then no, so another guy comes in. Now he's pulling us over the other way. And we didn't see the power wire there. the punch bowl and oh boy so now we got to get i figure if we could just break one balloon with a rock or maybe two or three balloons so i fire a rock up i got one okay okay now we break just break a couple more uh don't know quite what doll we had in mind here all right you know better not to ask sometimes i think the shirt says it all these oh the pitch pitchfork that's maybe maybe not the best maybe not the best i, I oh, oh Midnight somewhere, so Happy New Year. You know, it's great to have a New Year's party where your friends can enjoy themselves, but the last thing you want is somebody trying to drive a car after they've been overserved. So here's what you do. Stack a bunch of dead soldiers in the middle of the room, <laughs> then lay an empty pizza box on top. That's going to be a step stool that your friends can use to retrieve their car keys before they drive home. <laughs> and the reason they need a step stool is that when they arrived at the party, you took their keys and hung them from this ceiling fan. Now, each of your guests has to be sober enough to balance on the step stool, or they don't get their keys. And to make it a better test, I've wired the fan into a motion detector. So that as they approach the unit, it gets a little trickier to grab their keys. I need 
need a drink. Uncle Red, can I talk to you a minute? I was just working on my New Year's resolutions, you know, and I thought it might be a good idea to, to get some input from someone I spend a lot of time with, you know, to make sure that I'm making worthwhile changes. Oh, I think that's a great idea, Harold. Oh, okay, great, great, okay, good. Um, is there another chair around that I could use? A chair? I've got a footstool here. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, that'd be great. That'd be fun. Okay, so, I... <laughs> Thank you. Fine. Okay, um, well, I, I have my list out. Perhaps you'd like to take yours out. Why would I do that? Well, you know, I was just saying, you know, when two people yeah. spend a lot of time with each other, that, you know, New Year's is probably a really good time that they could sit down and, and, and figure out how to make the relationship better. Well, well, well. Yeah, no, no, I agree with you. So why don't you go through the changes you're going to make, because I can really help you out there. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, we'll start with mine then. Okay. Uh, well, I resolve to uh, limit how much I talk about computers, mm -hmm. uh, how long I'm on the internet. <laughs> Well, find a girlfriend, and to once again not to take up smoking. Yeah, okay, that's good. But you know what else, Harold? Is you shouldn't give your opinion all the time. I find that annoying. It's not a valid criticism. See, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Right well, there. that's just <laughs> that's food for thought. All okay. Right, yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, alrighty, that's that's my list. Why don't you okay. take yours out and read from yours now? No, I, I, actually, I'm not making any resolutions this year, Harold. No? No. Well, every year I make resolutions and then I break them one by one before the year is gone. You break them one by one before the hangover is gone. I kind of hit the glass ceiling, Harold, you know. I think this is about as good as I'm going to get and I'm going to stop fighting it, really. It's as good as you get. Yeah. Is that, is that a problem? No, I'm just trying to grasp the concept of being satisfied with that level of performance. <laughs> Yeah, I sure hope I haven't upset you, Harold. Huh? Oh, no, 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 no. You know, most men my age would be intimidated by the, you know, by the proficiency and accomplishments of their elders, but actually, you've spared me all that. Your wife's all ready for New Year's. She's got her new dress, her new hairdo, and her new queen-size control-top pantyhose. <laughs> now you're about to break it to her. You don't feel like going out this New Year's. <laughs> Now, for your own safety, try and let her down easy. There's no point in uh, pointing out what a good sport you were by going to all those Christmas parties with her. Now, especially when you got caught lying on the coats in the bedroom reading fishing magazines. <laughs> it's going to be pretty difficult to explain to her that you'd rather stay home with your favorite funny sports bloopers videos. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You might want to do a 180 on that. Yeah, like changing your mind, sucking it up, and going to the party after all. Yeah, yeah. Think about it this way. If she's having fun and you're not, you're still having way more fun than you would be when you're having fun and she's not. And just remember, New Year's Eve is just one cold night in January, but the garage is cold 24-7, 365. Think about it. We know you'll do the right thing. Or at least the safe thing. Happy, Happy New, New Year! Year. Okay, uh, my New Year's resolutions. Yeah, I got some. <laughs> Setting goals and working towards them is a big part of my rehabilitation program. <laughs> okay, um, burglar alarms. I'd like to see them outlawed. If we can't live together in an atmosphere of mutual trust, then what kind of a society is this? <laughs> to me, it is so insulting when that burglar alarm goes off and you suddenly realize, quite innocently, that you're not in your own home. <laughs> and, and the same goes for petty theft, too. Like, I'd like to see petty theft treated like a, a driving offense. Like, the first time you steal something, uh, you get off with a warning. <laughs> and I got a point system, too. Like, uh, a uh, uh, wallet is worth, like, one point, and a piano is, like, five points, right? And once you lose all your points, then you're not allowed to steal anything for a year, which is kind of like how jail works now. Only under my system, you'd be forced to get a job and make your own way rather than be incarcerated, where everything is paid for. Well, anyway, that's about it. Um, except that, well, you know, 
New Year's is a time for forgiveness. And if you're prepared to forgive, then I'm certainly prepared to accept that apology. <laughs> Happy New Year. You know, a lot of people like to commemorate New Year's Eve by having some type of audiovisual presentation in their backyard. Maybe firecrackers or a light show. It's their way of celebrating the beginning of a new year and also surprising the neighbors that they actually know what day it is. <laughs> now I know what you're thinking. Where are you going to find the money to do something like that? Or my wife won't let me have firecrackers. Or what the heck are you talking about, Red? Well, take it easy. With my idea, you don't need money or fireworks. All you need is a toaster. Well, actually, a few toasters. <laughs> that it? <laughs> and we don't even need the whole toaster. Just the elements from inside. I mean, they're perfect for our display because you can bend them into shapes and they glow when they're hot. Don't you wish more things in life were that simple? swearing. <laughs> okay, now we got the easy part. We just form the elements into the letters for our New Year's Eve sign. See, this here is, this is the letter T. Today's handyman corner is brought to you by the letter T. <laughs> now, if it doesn't work, it'll be the letter B. Because if she doesn't work, letter B. <laughs> okay, now we just uh, form the rest of the letters and then join all the elements together, making a sign that's not only bright, but also toasty warm. <laughs> Okay, our sign's all done, and I got the elements hooked up to these wires. And then to supply the electricity, I got the other end hooked into the power supply on one of my toasters. Now when I push down this little lever, we're gonna have an impressive display. But I gotta wait for night, because I got the control set on dark. <laughs> okay, we're all set. So let's send our lit New Year's message out to the world. Just a little something from all of us to each of you. I want to talk to all you middle-aged guys who are out celebrating New Year's this year. You know, it's never too soon to start thinking about the midnight kiss. You don't want to screw it up again now, do you? Okay? There's only one thing to remember, really. Kiss your wife first. <laughs> Excuses won't work. Like, I thought I was kissing you. I tried to, but somebody else's lips got in the way. Or worse still, oh, come on, honey, it's New Year's. I'm supposed to be having fun. <laughs> Okay, mainly you, you gotta be able to find your wife at midnight. That means you, know, you really wanna stay sober, okay? If you can't see, you're not gonna be able to find her. And braille is not an option. And when you do find her and you are kissing your own beauty queen, don't be trying to make eye contact with Miss Congeniality. Having a split focus at that crucial moment can lead to other splits. Split lip, splitting headache, splitting wife. And don't be using New Year's as a way to hook up with some of your ex-girlfriends. Should old acquaintance be forgot? Absolutely. <laughs> Especially if she's attractive and she's at the party and she's carrying around a picture of a 12-year-old boy who looks exactly like you. <laughs> so just cool it, have a happy New Year, and remember, I'm pulling for you. We're all in this together. <laughs> You know what? I am a firm believer in the New Year's resolution. So, oh, I know, a lot of people poo-poo it. But you know what? <laughs> to me, there's always room for improvement. So, first of all, ah, 
Anne-Marie, my wife, you know what? You could be a little more tolerant, huh? And, and maybe just a little less critical of my wardrobe. And, and maybe just a little friendlier in the romance department, huh? You know, if you get my drift. <laughs> now, as for my daughter, Mandy, you know, there's, there's nothing wrong with your lifestyle that, uh, you know, a new boyfriend and acceptable morals and maybe some gainful employment wouldn't solve. <laughs> okay, and, and this is the last one. For, for those of you who come into my store, you know, the, the word customer implies a, a business transaction where I sell you something, right? So this year, let's keep that tradition alive, huh? <laughs> you know, the customer's always right, but the browser's always a pain in the butt. <laughs> Happy New Year. This is the repair shop part of our New Year's special. We call, if it ain't broke, you're not trying. <laughs> so what do you got for us here, Mike? Uh, uh, this is an inflatable chair, Mr. Green. Oh, yeah. uh, ruefully, it has several holes in it due to uh, an unfortunate misunderstanding. <laughs> I notice this is from the uh, Shady Acres rest home. Uh, that's correct. I borrowed it from them. <laughs> Did you tell them you were borrowing it, Mike? Well, I may have. <laughs> but well, you know what old folks are like. <laughs> And uh, how come it's got all the holes in it? Well, one of the residents had a pellet gun. <laughs> well, I mean, I can fix the holes with the handyman's secret weapon, but there's no real hurry. It's going to be several months before you're going to get this thing into the pool. I need it now, right? Because I, I want to make it fly. You see, uh, if you can patch up the holes in it and put some kind of a gas in it, then I'll have myself a blimp. Do you think hydrogen would work? Yeah, uh, that would be a non-smoking flight. <laughs> So, where are you planning to go in the chair once you get it flying? Uh, around the world. Oh, yeah. See, I want to make up for all the New Year's Eves that I missed out on when I was in the Slammer. See? Oh. Now, the Earth has 24 different time zones, and I want to celebrate New Year's in each and every one of them. Okay, okay I understand how the chair is going to get up in the air, but what's going to make it fly? Nothing. That's the beauty of a rotating Earth. You see, it'll just spin by underneath me, and, and, and like, I'll just drop down in every time zone, I'll have myself a quick beer and kiss somebody's wife. Okay, okay, Mike, there's two problems with your plan, okay? It won't work, and you'll die. So forget about the chair. Go up to that airport bar, you know, by Port Asbestos there. They got all the clocks from everywhere all around the world there, and every time one of them hits midnight, have yourself a glass of bubbly. Okay, that might be kind of fun, but I'd, I'd like someone to go along with me. Well, we'll take one of the guys from Shady Acres. I mean, I find old people really enjoy celebrating New Year's. They're so shocked that they made it, you know? Uh, I don't know if I want to spend New Year's with a boring old senior citizen. Well, I'll take the guy with the pellet gun. Hey, he knows how to party, huh? <laughs> That's a great idea. Yeah, all right, yeah. You know, the only sad part is that I won't be able to spend any time with all my buddies. They're all still in jail. Well, you know, if you're going to be at a 24-hour bar and your drinking partner is an armed senior, I think the chances of you and your jail buddies getting back together is real good. Great. Yeah, you know. Well, that's it for our New Year special. We hope you enjoyed it. Uh, but if you did happen to fall asleep on the couch, well, that's good, too, because now you'll be able to stay awake till midnight. Huh? <laughs> and for all you younger people out there, we wish you the, the best New Year's ever, and we hope that next year is just a safe and happy one, too. Yeah, and, and, and for your older guys out there, let's hope we can all survive any harebrained thing the young people throw at us over the next 12 months, huh? <laughs> oh, oh, Fred, that reminds me. I'd like to thank you for all the opportunities you've given me for personal growth and professional development over the past years. And, and I hope that we get to spend many, many more years together. <laughs> how many? How many more? Many, many more. Okay, I think it's time to open the bar. So, we have myself and Harold and the whole gang up here at Possum Lodge. Happy New Year! Happy New Year! <laughs>